Welcome to the Hyatt Sea Defences. This is a major refurbishment of the defences in the area. These protect the local communities, businesses, key infrastructure and farmland throughout Romney Marsh. The two storms that we saw at the beginning of the year, Storm Dennis and Storm Cara, show just how important defences such as this are to the nation. Projects like this are only delivered through great teamwork. I'd like to thank the team at the Environment Agency, our partners, the MOD, Van Ord, our contractors, Hyde Town Council, Historic England, Natural England, the local community and the local fishermen that have all pulled together and focused on helping us deliver this project successfully. Thank you all very much. Romney Marsh is on the south coast of England. Much of it lies below the present-day high tide sea level. Last year, um, at nearby Lyd, um, the seawall was almost overtopped. Waves were coming over and starting to wash away. And that could have been quite devastating because once the defences have gone, the sea will come in at the high tide and start to permanently flood the land. During 2020, work was completed on the Hythe Ranges Sea Defence Scheme, a really important part of the coastal defences between Folkestone and Hastings. The scheme ran along a 3.2 kilometre stretch of beach between Hythe and the Dimchurch Redoubt, an historic fort built in 1805 to defend against the threat of invasion by Napoleon. The adjacent land is owned by the Ministry of Defence, and is an important mission-critical operational firing range. Um, we couldn't close high down as a training facility as that would have had a major impact uh, on the operational capability of the military. Uh, therefore, there was a fine juggling act uh, uh, and a plan that I needed to come up with to ensure that I could allow um, the movement of the contract personnel on the beach and still facilitate uh, uh, live firing training at Hythe. We had a very good agreement. Um, they would give us half of the ranges to actually start our work on while they were firing in a different direction. Um, and then halfway through, we kind of swapped over. Um, so we worked very carefully with the Ministry of Defence um, and the Army because it was very important to them. There were three main components to the works. A priority was fixing the foundations of the Grand Redoubt. Historic England have been heavily involved uh, because there's been a great deal of works in front of and around the Napoleonic Redoubt. So they've had to be involved to make sure that uh, you know, we get, get everything right when it comes to addressing the needs of that particular building. We helped protect this uh, element of the structure by importing 37,000 tonnes of rock from Norway. We've put the new rock revetment in front, which will protect it. We've also put in um, some benches and um, a special information board so people can come and understand a little bit about the scheme and about the history of the redoubt as well. The groins along the beach needed replacing with 1,250 cubic metres of specially imported FSC certified timber from Guyana timber that has come from sustainable and responsibly managed forests that provide environmental, social and economic benefits. The material was chosen because it is particularly resistant to abrasion and is perfect for sea conditions. The groins were about 50 years old and had rotten and weren't really holding the shingle back. Um, the shingle had been eroded and taken out to sea and during the winter storms, the whole area was at risk from flooding as well. With new groins in place, the shingle on the beach could be replaced. Using the dredger Vox Amalia, over 300,000 cubic metres of shingle was pumped to shore. The shingle was then loaded into dump trucks and then spread along the beach and placed into the groin bays. During 2020, the world was rocked by the global COVID pandemic. 
In the early days, COVID was a very, very big impact on our project. Uh, we started work in um, April. That was two weeks after the national lockdown. We had to very quickly adapt to a new way of working in line with the construction industry guidelines. We increased the number of porter cabins on the site. We also introduced a full-time cleaner to ensure that the welfare was kept clean and tidy at all times. We put up two web cameras and uh, they were able to remotely monitor the beach. So I was able to log in from home every morning and find out what was going on. Protecting wildlife is an important component of the project. The habitat at the back of the beach and beyond is very important. There's a plant there called the wild carrot, which supports the larvae of the Sussex emerald moth, which is an endangered species. Then the relevant experts came on site and we were able to look at quite a varied biodiversity um, uh, on, the, on the site uh, and a number of uh, important species to ensure that they remain protected uh, and that there is no impact um, uh, to them as a, as a result of the works of the sea defences. Part of the site is um, a special protected area for wading birds, so we had to make sure we didn't adversely impact those as we were working. We've improved the biodiversity and wildlife on this project. The granite is particularly hard and sterile, so we've improved that by carving rock pools. We're very pleased to say that uh, 48 hours after we installed the first one, we found some very rare sand eels in there. And it's the first time that's been seen in this country. On the timber groins, we've also introduced timber troughs using recycled hardwood. And we've also bolted on a new product which is called a vertipool, which is a, a small concrete rock pool which we bolt to the face of the timber. We wrapped rope around the timber groins to help seaweed and other creatures attached to it, um, which is an important part of enhancing the biodiversity. We will be monitoring the growth of wildlife on this project for the next three years. If we find that it's been successful, we'll be using these designs on future projects. Another aspect of tackling the challenge of climate change is reducing carbon emissions. A key target for the Environment Agency when creating these schemes is to make sure that we reduce our carbon impact and we're aiming to be a net zero carbon organisation by 2030. We've introduced cement-free concrete. By doing this we've managed to save 50 tonnes of carbon. The other way we've managed to save carbon on this project is by reducing the quantity of rock from 50,000 tonnes of rock down to 37,000 tonnes of rock. The effect of this has reduced our carbon footprint by approximately another 2,000 tonnes of carbon. Preparations are now being made on the next phase of sea defence work. We're starting on a major project at Lid, very similar to this one. Straight after that we'll be moving on to an intertidal project near Rye, rebuilding the, the tidal walls on the River Rother. That will help us to secure, in flood damages avoided, 14,500 people, a nuclear power station, key critical national infrastructure, hundreds of hectares of prime farmland and over 700 businesses. <laughs>